that's uh, yeah. two Wait. aging guys with pot bellies and ball caps, you know, with a camera. It's I like those kind of guys. I don't know. That's kind of okay, guys we, I hang out with. We, 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 <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah, we 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 have things to say. Um, that's that's right. for sure. Yeah, right. there's a this there's a generational uh, thing. We're we're uh, interested in in acoustic music and. A lot of it's old acoustic music and not necessarily new acoustic music, but it's it's something that that we uh, both are really in, into. And uh, I met Swamp. Uh, we talked about this before because he he produced what I would sort of generally classify as a as an album that blended old acoustic music with new acoustic music called Different Strokes. Do you want to talk sure. about that a little bit? That's true. A uh, good friend of mine named Jim Horrells, who's passed away last few years uh, would make a record uh, black vinyl type thing every few years and um, we had a young lady uh, who's gone and gone on to fame and fortune named Allison Krauss uh, played on that album and uh, which is kind of the new wait, wait, like, the you know, Allison Krauss the well I don't think her first name is the I don't know <laughs> Allison though uh, yeah but anyway it was yeah. kind of a mix I don't know how successful it was but it was a mix of Old and new styles there. So. But she was just a kid. She was 14 years old. So. Wow. Yeah. And and she plays uh, like, I mean, you you would almost, uh, if you listen to this record, not that many people know about the record or have ever heard it, but if Allison, it's in our theme song. Yeah. And she plays like a 70-year-old jazz fiddle player. I mean, it's yeah. just like Stephen Grappelli or something. Mm -hmm. Pretty incredible. Yeah, yeah, that's it's a phenom. Uh, I tell you what, at this point, we're gonna Stop bring on. Look. I'm gonna leave, and we're going to bring on our first guest, Craig Bozo Bomberger. Hey. And uh, Craig, as as we said, uh, was around when this idea all started. That's right. Mm -hmm. And he but has. Don't, but don't blame him for the. Like, yeah, yeah, he well, was there. But yeah, um, he's been writing songs and really thoughtful, amazing songs for about the last, uh, well, he's probably ever since, but in the he's last three or four years, he's... He's gotten, what we call in the business a songwriter. Well, that's because of the way he plays banjo, I suppose. <laughs> okay. Uh, I, I do want him to describe, I saw a Steve Martin video recently where he describes the difference between bluegrass banjo playing and claw hammer banjo playing. And uh, me, I, I just bought a banjo recently, and I, I call my style claw foot banjo. Claw foot. <laughs> yeah. So anyway, this is, without further ado, -do, here's, here's Craig, the rancher, jet pilot, Bomberger. Don't leave out an international playboy. That's another thing he does. Hey, Craig, come on up. Well, thank you very much. Come on, Robert, Craig. What are you supposed to do now? Introduction. Uh, good old friend of mine, Craig, over here. Uh, we call him Bose. I don't know for reasons unknown, but... Uh, he probably knows, but his nickname, everybody had a nickname for a while there, so. Anyway, uh, do you recall, it seems like a guy I, I do recall. Okay. I uh, certainly do. When we first met. Clear as a bell. Okay. Yes. It was a happy day, I think. For I do recall. Both of us. Went. What happened that day? Anyway? Oh, you want to hear how it happened. Oh, okay. What did happen? Uh, Lane Bones Mayfield, oh, not yeah. to be mistaken with Craig Bowles Bomberger, right. and Bones. I had met, I recently... <clears throat> left the United States Army and I learned to play the banjo a little bit and I met up with some folk singers in Greenville, one of which was Lane Mayfield. And Lane and I were hanging around the college, Greenville, I believe college. We're Greenville College in Greenville, Illinois, and I believe we were sitting on the steps of the student union and we were playing... Looking for women, probably. Uh, Salt Creek. Oh, we sure. were playing Salt Creek and not particularly well but, improved a bit, yeah. <laughs> but we were and playing Salt Creek and uh, uh, you and Dave Johnson I think and Dave maybe Johnson. Bruce walked past and I wasn't really acquainted with you but Lane knew you and, and knew the Johnsons and they asked hey show me that lick on that you're playing on Salt Creek now Dave Johnson is a much better banjo player than I he's a good one but it, but it just goes to show sometimes somebody will invent a little thing that sure. a more advanced musician will say, hey, that's something that I hadn't learned or hadn't sure. Talked, sure. thought of before. 
And that was the first time that I met you. Okay. Now, somehow after that, you and Lane and I became yeah started playing some music together, and a bass player named Dave Leonati joined us, and we became the Elastic Waist Band. Mm -hmm. That's right. That's stretching it a little bit, but and we, uh, we tried to charm our ways into the hearts of the Midwesterners. Yes, yeah. uh, and we Midwest. we were a bluegrass sensation oh. for several years. I was doing some. Um, Recording at Dave Mayfield's uh, subterranean homesick studio in Greenville, and uh, Craig, I got Craig down to play some banjo, and he had written a song. One of the first songs he wrote uh, had written was uh, a banjo instrumental called Bozo Banjo, and uh, we put that on a mostly cassette release. That shows you how long ago that was. And uh, over the years, uh, Video Bob, may I call you Video Bob? Yeah, absolutely. Video Bob uh, got the idea to. Uh, Okay. Just don't call me late for supper. All right. Uh, video Bob had the idea to shoot a video and uh, went to a friend of Craig's, um, whose name is, escapes me at this point. Roger Risberg. Roger Risberg. Roger and Barbara Risberg. Yeah. Roger had a nice little uh, uh, front porch for he us to sit on. recreated an Ozark cabin, cabin at his pond over on Terrapin Ridge. It's a beautiful setting and pond Ridges. out in front there. And Okay, let's, uh, yeah, now, is it, I, I need to clarify something here. Clarify. Yeah. Now, do you or do you not propose marriage to Jane Fonda? Well, I tell you what, we've kind of mellowed over the years. Asked, he gets asked that a lot. Yes. Uh, the, initially, initially, <laughs> uh, I kind of wondered, uh, when I wrote that song, I said that I would not propose marriage to Jane Fonda, but... As the years went by, and, and I my him about, friend here, Swampy, uh, uh, kind of pointed no, out to me, he said, uh, <laughs> wait, wait if you yeah. had the chance, I think you probably, and I had to admit, <laughs> yes, if I had had the mm. opportunity, which I did not, and have not since. Uh, she never wrote on your airplane. When composing you this fly. proposal, composing <laughs> this song, I, I have not had the opportunity, but I would have to admit that. Yes, Jane Fonda probably would make huh. fine looking wife. Well, uh, like I say, I got out of the Army in 77. I was fortunate I missed the, uh, the Vietnam conflict. And as I reflected over the years, I uh, decided that there was <clears throat> many reasons I did that. But one of the most unpopular figures in the United States during that period was probably one reason that I avoided that conflict, and that was a young lady named Jane Fonda. A nice, well, she's a pretty lady. But anyway, Jane Fonda, you all... She's old lady now. Yeah, she doesn't look old. Like that. It's all those aerobics. Like it's about Jane Fonda. I'm kind of fond of Jane, you know. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Wouldn't want to have her for my wife. Had great boots and Barbarella, well, they made her look real nice. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. When I was a young man, I was going to Vietnam. I was
was gonna be a hero and fight the Viet Cong. By the time I joined the army, it was way too late. Everyone had caught the boat and they'd headed for the States. They fought for many years, many soldiers got the call. They thought we had to fight them there, the dominoes would fall. Forty-five years later, we know it was a sham. Every other shirt you buy says made in Vietnam. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Wouldn't want to have her for my wife. Everybody sing along. Had great boots in Barbarella, they made her look real nice. Made her think Jane Fonda saved my life. Player boys. He talks about his war He says we gotta fight him there We'll fight him on our shore Well I'm with Cindy Sheehan Give the soldiers all a pass Let the bad guys come to us And then we'll kick their ass Well I really think Jane Fonda saved my life Wouldn't wanna have her for my wife Had great boots in Barbarella Well they made her look real nice Really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Player won't swamp. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Wouldn't wanna have her for my wife. I liked her boots in Barbarella, they made her look real nice. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Not Rumsfeld, Bush, or Cheney, or Condoleezza Rice. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Some people called her traitor, I thought she was nice. Well, I really think Jane Fonda saved my life. Can I say Genesis? What's the genesis of After the Laughter? What were you thinking about? The genesis of After the Laughter. When you wrote the, the tune laughter. After the Laughter. You know, I don't, I'm. Now I look at you. I'm not really yeah. certain. So I'm yeah. I just. Good that answer. Was, that was. Uh, <laughs> Do your best Charlie Rose. <clears throat> that was one of those, uh, one of those things where I was, Sometimes you just wake up in the morning and you got something stuck in your head and, and it uh, turns into a line in a song and and maybe with a little tune maybe not but but and i don't remember what was what the first part of that was but i, I think it was some the part about uh, you might like to die with a fortune so you work all your life like a slave and then i just went from there and kind of the essence is after the laughter boys comes the end and everybody's going to face it so don't waste any time finding what you want and that was the genesis. And you know, the funny thing about it was I wrote that and played it here as a slow song, but when we went down to the Greenville studio and recorded that, these guys, when you get them playing these, in a studio with these musical guys, instruments. I think we should say at this point, these guys was also involved, Jerry Chapman Jerry on guitar Chapman. and uh, Mike Goose Miller, who I play with a lot on the bass. On the bass. Those are the other guys in question. They will check with them. They may want you to edit and not mention <laughs> their names. That's Jerry Chapman from Elm yeah. Point, Illinois, playing his Taylor guitar. And yeah. Goose Miller with, what kind of bass does he have? I'm not sure. I don't think it's Fender. Remember. It's so, Goose Miller on the bass. Okay. But anyway, we got down there, and we they was just warming up. Had us all in little isolation rooms and headphones on and the high tech stuff and the man was mixing with the mixer board and the buttons and the things like he has in there and they just started in playing and and uh 
they started playing a tune in an up-tempo <laughs> kind of way, and it was rolling along pretty good, so I just started singing after the laughter. And it worked oh. real well. It originally, an up tempo version. Originally, he had like a Roy Arverson kind of after the love. Yeah, the sunglasses, and <laughs> something like all that. that you know. And then uh, <laughs> we got in there. So we rolled through it and that up tempo <laughs> way, and it uh, it sounded good. I said, "Well, let's mm -hmm. do it that way." One, two, three. The song is is you know doggone profound it really is it's 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 wow it's a it's it's a deep thought so to speak but a lot of a lot of the cd and a lot of the cd is like that where you're you're, you're talking about some of the serious things in life there's some great poetry some great philosophy and and it's all put to very listenable tempos and in instrumental background and uh, i mean you just you don't see a lot of that anymore. I mean, it's uh, the the days of the singer songwriter kind of came and went, and 
you know, I guess people would try to draw a comparison to John Prine, perhaps. Um, but, try, but, but yeah, well, but don't let John find out. <laughs> yeah, John, John, John's been performing a, for a heck of a long time. He's a real pro, but he is a guy from Illinois who writes thoughtful songs and, and in a real kind of, you know, in the best sense, plain kind of, uh, I think it's true. When you get as old as I am, this is Craig's dad, Fred, at his birthday party what, back in 2002. What don't hurt, it's priceless. don't work. <laughs> and I heard the other day somebody said, "When you get, you know you're getting old when you think more about what you've done in the past than what you're going to do in the future. And that's me. And uh, they said I was going to play uh, Red River Valley. They seem to know that that's the only thing I know. Uh, this is a song that uh, we haven't recorded yet, but we've been working on, and it's about a girl that I don't know. <laughs> and but anyway, that's it's a new song. <laughs> Where you are leaving the part where you were walking out the door. When I try to say I'm sorry, my lips are sealed and I can't make a sound. Wake up in the morning when the rerun of a nightmare comes around. Tell me where have you gone, Loretta? Pierron, Route 143, 
There's a store in Millersburg that you really have to see. There's fish fry every Friday night, there's breakfast every day. There's music Sunday afternoons, bring a guitar you can play. I ride a horse or a cycle, a buggy or a boat. Well, drop in with a parachute or ride a billy goat. There's lots of room to park, and you can picnic on the grass. That's Millersburg General Store right here, get gas. Well, Joe and Ron say you're welcome, come on in. Then when you are leaving, say you all come back again. If you're hungry or your tank is low, you really shouldn't pass. Well, first you have a real good meal, and then you get your gas. Oh yeah, first you have a real good meal, and then you get your gas. That's Millersburg General Store, eat here, get gas. Swamp, I guess that's the end of the first podcast. Yep, kind of got a sad and lonesome feeling, but there'll be more podcasts in the future, I suppose. Pods, yeah, they, they tend to proliferate, you know, the, the pods are taking over the world. Pods, uh, pod people. Pod people, yes. Uh-huh. How do you find these really unique, rare individual type? It's Backwoods Jack. Come on over, Jack. He just happened to be in the neighborhood. Come on, Jack. Yeah. Have a seat, no room for a scruffy old hobo, I hope. <laughs> and his dog. And, and that's old Foxy. And for Foxy boy here, Foxy at boy. least he's a little better looking than I am. Yeah, I don't know. Thank Craig for showing up today, and uh, we'll at his own house. Thank you, Craig. Yeah. 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 Thanks for coming home. Thank you, Craig, for coming home today. We're sure glad we caught you here. <laughs>